moving on, Rupa Huck. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, very interesting to hear different and somewhat divergent views from the four of you. Uh, we've also had Dame Margaret Beckett in front of us, who obviously had a coherent view within herself. Uh, she was um, leader of the Commons at a time when there were big uh, majority governments, so different situation. But I mean, I've noticed, having been here since 2015, it does feel like, um, well, certainly after that second election when the government lost its majority, that they do uh, seem to be more and more in control of the timetable. We had a period where there were no opposition days. They were not being granted. When they did come back, uh, Conservative MPs being whipped to vote against Labour motions. Then we've seen the way they've been forced to publish legal and financial advice. The, the pooled vote last year, you know, all this stuff does add up to a picture. Um, I mean, Dame Margaret's words were, in the end, the government must get its business. Um, why must the government get its business? <laughs> With great respect, I, I think that really should be examined, and when it is examined, it will be revealed to be rubbish. The government mustn't get its business. If you carry that to its logical conclusion, you have a dictatorship, mm. and the government gets its business, mm. and Parliament enacts whatever the government tells it to. The government doesn't have to get its business. What the government is entitled to is to put its business before the House mm -hmm. and for the House to decide it. I don't think the government must get its business. I think <coughs> it must get its business considered. Mm -hmm. oh, good. That's very encouraging for tonight. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I completely agree with uh, Lord Judge on that. Yeah, and, and I, I agree. I mean, the, the, the phrase the government must always get, get its business is a phrase I have heard in relation to the House of Lords. Uh, because the House of Lords must pay deference to the democratic chamber. And so in the House of Lords, they think the government must get its business. And as Lord Judge says, um, I mean, Parliament's most important business is what the government's up to. So um, putting that before the House is, is rather more important. The idea that Parliament and government have different um, things to consider is, is wrong. The, the government has the responsibility for... Uh, conducting affairs and for coordinating them and so on. And so that's what is most relevant to what Parliament's there for, which is to scrutinise and to um, call people to account and to legitimise what the, the government is doing. Uh, I, I, th I think there is an issue about whether or not the House of Commons, having, having given its confidence to the government, uh, can really allow itself to behave in a way that is totally inconsistent with that. Uh, if if um, the House of Commons thinks that the government uh, isn't entitled to any of its business, isn't entitled to its money, isn't entitled to its legislative programme, uh, then it needs to withdraw its confidence. That's the way the system is organised. Uh, to say we will give you confidence but we will not let you um, have any of the incidents of that uh, seems to me to be uh, constitutionally incoherent. So the expression of a vote tonight, we've had it already, in fact, that people don't want no deal. The MPs mm -hmm. are not in agreement with no deal. Mm -hmm. what, what effect can that have? Is it completely meaningless in the end? Well, in the end, it's a, an expression of opinion that the House of Commons uh, has uh, very limited ways of enforcing. But the way for it to enforce it is to say, uh, well, if you don't accept this, we will withdraw confidence. Uh, if the House of Commons is not prepared to do that, then there seems in some ways little point in uh, expressing the opinion. Uh, of course the government will want to respect what the House has said, but in a situation where it cannot, um, you know, where it's got to choose between options for which no one's in favour, um, it, it, it cannot be forced mm. well, to comply with the House's order. Uh, I think then there's a distinction, isn't there, with the amendment that seeks legislation. Mm, yeah, there are Cooper some versions tonight, yeah, with more yeah, So I think that, that's a rather important difference. But in the long run, there's a political question to be decided in the House. But there's a legal <coughs> question, and if the result of everything that's going on is that you cannot have a majority to repeal mm. the ECA mm. 1972, then you haven't got a majority mm. and it stays in force. Yes, well, except it has been repealed. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us rebelled, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks.